The Databases for Machine Learning and Machine Learning for Databases seminar series at Carnegie Mellon University is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Funding for this program is made possible by Google and from contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome uh, to another Davis talk here at Carnegie Mellon. We're excited today to have GN Tan. Uh, he is a research scientist and director of the Intelligent Database team at Alibaba. Uh, so he's here, here to talk about all the interesting ML stuff they've been doing inside of uh, the various database products that Alibaba's been building. So as always, if you have questions for Jian as he's giving a talk, please unmute yourself, say who you are, and fire away at any time. And that way he's talking to not talking to himself for an hour on Zoom. So Jian, thank you so much for being here. The floor is yours. Uh, go for it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's super <clears throat> exciting for me to uh, to be here. Uh, thanks, Andy, for inviting me. So now let's imagine, okay, Andy gave me a title and I decided to, let me insert a modifier in front of the title. Let's call this a uh, intervention. Now the title is handcrafted domain knowledge augmented AI for databases. Almost immediately, some red alarms are triggered in the back of the brain. Isn't that domain knowledge AI is from the first wave of AI? Now we have almost passed second wave using statistical learning, and are now in the third wave using a large and deep uh, neural networks. Are you anti-trend or even worse, anti-pattern? So in the first wave, people uh, did use principles and summarize best common practice. Recently, due to a breakthrough in uh, neural networks, especially Transformer-based based architecture. People realize that, okay, using general model uh, with less hand engineering, when pumped up with large data sets, can have some amazing emergent capability. For example, uh, the same model can be used by completely different uh, tasks and almost always give the best result. For example, in Spider Leaderboard Challenge, uh, which is to translate natural language question to SQL statements. Currently, almost all the top ranked submissions or solutions are based on ChatGPT, using either some kind of good uh, retrieval methods uh, to augment or some very well-defined prompts. Prompts are great. The only issue is that uh, sometimes it may not always follow your instruction. And for uh, to SQL, I personally think that prompts are a little bit too high level and some low-level control will be needed. Oh, here comes today's new message. So I think it's possible to insert precisely in a very low level, handcrafted interventions into the system, such that it's far more efficient and sometimes even more effective. Even small models can be effective, can be mighty. Okay. Uh, AI4DB is a big topic, and today I'm going to use two uh, real systems that have been developed uh, from our team to uh, explain to you why introducing, uh, introducing interventions can be helpful. Uh, the first uh, system is uh, Secret Bridge on NLT Secret. Second is on Shapley IQ about uh, DevOps root cause analysis. NLT Secret. So the input definitely includes the original question, but that's not enough. We also need the uh, schema data, uh, data information, including a table name, column name, uh, some other constraints such as type information, uh, drawing relationship, uh, primary foreign key information, etc. Sometimes we even need to consider SQL dialogues, for example, SQL um, uh, top and the limit that are, uh, are used by SQL Server and MySQL respectively. Here is one real example. On the right-hand side is the SQL statement generated from SQL Bridge. I use this example to illustrate the challenges in deriving a SQL statements. So the question is, what's the average life expectancy in the countries where English is not the official language? At least there are three challenges. First, we have a, in the well clause, we have a subquery. Second, in the subquery, we have a drawing relationship. Third, we need to map one phrase from the question, which is official language to one of the column that is called is official. Notice that here, is official is of type 
uh, Boolean. So we can only assign value either true or false, or maybe none as well. Um, but here, in order to make it to be correct, logically correct, we have to assign a value a true to its a feature. And in the auto query, use a not in operator. When we develop SQL Bridge, one of the most commonly asked questions from my colleagues is, since all the almost all the top ranked solutions from uh, uh, Spider Leaderboard are based on ChatGPT, why not just fine tune a large language model and optimize your prompts? In order to answer this, let me try to compare GPT with SQL Bridge using some examples. Here, I want to emphasize the following examples are used actually are selected in favor SQL Bridge. Therefore, don't, don't read too much into it. Uh, it, it may be biased, uh, but my purpose is to show that even the amazing GPT-4, including the newly released GPT-4 Turbo, can still make mistakes. Okay, the first question is from Spider. Find the name of the maker that produced some cars in the year of 1970. Actually, the prompts uh, is pretty long. It's actually from uh, the number one ranked solution from Spider before November 2nd. The prompts consist of two parts. First, you need to provide the data schema information. Then it uses, this prompt uses uh, some additional algorithm to find the similar problems from some repository. Uh, so uh, these similar problems include uh, the natural question, natural language question, as well as corresponding SQL statement. So it, you can view it as if it's a retrieval augmented solution. However, here GPT-4 made a mistake in correcting, in, in, in finding, a, a generating a wrong column. Okay, This column even doesn't exist in the table. The correct one should be model, but not, not, not model ID. This seems to be minor, okay? However, even after you correcting this mistake, there's another even more tricky problem where model and uh, make ID, they cannot be joined. There's no join relationship. SQL bridge always guarantee consistency. Actually, this uh, is a not a new idea. In the literature, there are a lot of work that uses uh, this similar approach. Um, so we, our core engine is a, is a transformer based and an, uh, encoder decoder. It will generate some hidden space, okay? And it will uh, use a dedicated module to measure how similar this uh, hidden state uh, re, uh, with respect to the columns that form a table, okay? In other words, we always select a column that exists in the table. The novelty actually comes from how we make this to be principled, which will be explained later. Okay, on the schema graph, under the assumption, under the assumption that suppose our core engine, which is a transformer-based network, gives the right column, then we just compute the minimum standard tree on the schema graph. What's the schema graph? It's just a tree where each of the table is represented as a node and it's connected by with its associated columns. And if two column has a join relationship, then they are also connected, okay? By searching a minimum span standard tree, uh, we guarantee that we always return a valid path, which is also uh, the shortest. This issue, this actually uh, is further illustrated in the, by the second example. Here we have only one join, but uh, GPT-4 have uh, three joins. There's an even more tricky problem here. GPT-4 selected two columns. The first column actually is preceded by an aggregation, aggregation function. In other words, this max aggregator will only return a single row, a single element. But the second row actually potentially can return multiple rows, which is a set. Now we have a rule, right? So we need to insert this rule into the SQL generation. The only issue is how, where and when. Recall that we have an engine, right? The engine is based on transformer. It has its own running mechanism. We don't want our insertion to blow up our engine. Talking about the rule, here there's another rule. 
suppose we have a group by, then we can only select columns that have already appeared in the group by. Uh, or we have an ag aggregation function in front of the column. So this is another rule. The climax of this observation is to realize there's only a finite number of rules for us to consider. Okay, here's another very important example. GPT-4 generate count population for the phrase, how many people, which sounds plausible, but actually is wrong. The correct answer should be sum, because why? Why? Because population has an integer type. It makes more sense to make summation over all this integer type to compute the total number of people, right? Um, the reason why SQL Bridge happened to make a correct answer in this case is because we actually use a dedicated classif classification module to handle all the operators. Uh, what's more important? What's more important? We can hand pick some hand engineered features. For example, here we can use the type information to enhance this very simple classification module. Okay. It turns out that this methodology of using dedicated module to handle con abstract concepts is uh, very powerful. Whenever we have concepts that are very difficult to be generated, we have two options. Okay, either you refine you you re fine tune the model using some similar samples, which require some manual label labeling work, or we escalate this concept to be part of the grammar handled by this dedicated classification module. Hey, Jian. Yes. Yeah, we have a question. We have a question. Uh, can you please explain what SQL Bridge is here? Oh, oh SQL Bridge uh, uh, is just a name. It's an internal name for our product. It's, uh, I know probably you're talking about another similar work which uses Bridge, uh, but uh, SQL Bridge is just a name for our internal usage. I guess maybe he's asking like, what is it actually just like a custom transformer that you guys? Oh build? yeah, actually, uh, the intention is to bridge. Um, so because we want to make it to be in DB, this to be a uh, in DB ML, it will be part of the um our database uh, core engine, and it serves as a bridge uh, to serve to provide the interface for the customers so that the customer can directly okay, uh, input language model. For example, it can just uh, select like a bridge, uh, then within the parentheses, just uh, provide your uh, nat nat natural language questions. Then it should automatically generate uh, a SQL statement and uh, give you the answer. So maybe so that's why is this like Athena-based, uh, NLP-based transformation, like not deep neural deep learning, or does it use like a neural network? Uh, okay. Yeah, this is our core engine. Our core engine actually is based on a transformer architecture. Yeah, but uh, it's augmented by a grammar structure. We use grammar to introduce, to induce some structure to the uh, SQL generation progress. The only issue is the, how to make this to be uh, principled. As I mentioned, we don't want to make these interventions to blow up our engine, right? Because a uh, uh, transformer has its own uh, so it running mechanism. In that it's a hybrid between having something like it's probably is is the neural uh, is the underlying DNN something that is llama based that you fine tuned or is it something else? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, great, great question. So uh, maybe I can I, 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 we will explain we will see all the details later, but in short, it's it's actually um, we all the novelty comes from the decoder. The encoder is a pre-trained model. We have uh, designed a new, completely new decoder, but uh, which will be explained later. Yeah, but let's uh, first uh, uh, talk about uh, these are our motivations. I think this, this information, these examples are very informative. They actually give us a direction on uh, and explain why we choose this direction, which will be elaborated later. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is another um, uh, example, as I mentioned. Uh, based on the feedback from our customer enterprise customers, they told me to us that the train index is very important. However, 
it seems that this chain, chain is, is very easy, right? It's simple. It has a very nice structure. It's just a defined bit of value in the current period minus the value in the immediately preceding period and I divide it by the letter. It has a very nice structure. However, it's super hard to generate it correctly in a complex uh, sentence. Why? Because it may be modified by complex propositional phrases. Here is one question. What's the chain index of the total number of stocks dealer Wei Mingzhang had in January of last year? Actually, GPT-4 made a mistake in deriving the correct time. This morning, actually, I just checked the GPT-4 uh, GPT Turbo. It turns out GPT-4 Turbo is, uh, is much better. It gives uh, the right answer. Then I tested another relatively more complex example. Pardon me for the small font, because uh, this uh, SQL is pretty long. Uh, the question is, what's the chain index of my attendance rate for the last week? Okay, even though I myself have never asked such a question <laughs> during my whole, uh, throughout my whole career, but uh, I know this is a real question from our enterprise customer. Because it's from an enterprise customer, so we need some additional information to recognize what's the meaning of my attendance. For example, we need to provide the employee ID and also the corporation ID. Those will be provided in the prompts for ChatGPT, for us, it's provided as a configuration JSON file. Okay, if you look at the bottom, interestingly, Turbo 4, uh, GPT-4 Turbo, even list steps in chain of thoughts. The high level steps actually are correct. Okay, the high level logic flow is correct. GPT-4 Turbo know, knows what it should do. However, it still make low level mistakes in deriving the correct ends, uh, time as well. And, and it also even lost one critical information about the corp, corp split. And the SQL bridge, okay, it's just our product, it's the name, <clears throat> uh, internally used, internally used so far. Um, <clears throat> it actually always generates a structured answer. Notice that here we didn't forget the corporate, corporate split information. And if you read it carefully, actually it even generates um, the time, okay? Internally, we are using a dedicated module to generate the time. So far, we have tested a number of different cases, uh, including to simple ones, to complex ones. It seems that for SQL Bridge, it always, okay, so far always generate the correct answer for anything related to chain index. Okay, so far, I, I think at least I have uh, convinced you using interventions is at least a feasible solution. Even though it's not a must, it's a feasible solution. Different people may have different opinions. Maybe next year, who knows, G uh, GPT-5 may solve these problems completely. However, I can still argue, our model has only less than 400 million number of parameters. It's ideal for low resource setting. But then you can rebut. I don't care low resource, I'm rich. So can you really give me one explanation? Okay. Um, here, let me let me make an attempt. So by drawing by drawing an analogy, do you think is um, professional car racing is difficult? Even though I'm not rich enough to play this game, but I think it must be difficult. But interestingly enough, I found that based on my experience from playing video game, I can almost always I can almost always make right judgment on whether I should turn left or right, even though I still constantly make mistakes in the low level. And these two levels seems to be natural now, when put into perspective for Chomsky grammar hierarchy, because natural language is unstricted. But for SQL, at least the most part is context free. So here's one big assumption that I made for only for NL2 SQL tasks. Only for NL2 SQL tasks. It may not uh, hold for other tasks. It's relatively easy to understand the high level meaning because, because of the engine. I said, I, I mentioned that we use a transformer based 
encode decode architecture. It has a very strong capability to understand the high level meaning and, and, and then the long range dependencies. Since we are querying the database for the fact data, so th it seems that there's no need for us to memorize too much world, info, world knowledge. So theoretically speaking, it's okay to use a relatively small model with a, a, without too many parameters, okay? In other words, a small or relatively small model, it seems to, at least it should work. The only issue is the how to precisely insert this low level control, okay? without blowing our, up our engine. To this end, we introduce a new context-free grammar, which will make the whole generation process to be structured. On a high level, on a high level, we only generate essential information, which will be assembled by the grammar. On a low level, since we know the grammar production rule, we, we know the rule that we, we, are, we are using. So we can actually attach associated actions. For example, here is a, is a question. At least the contracts that are about to expire. The con when the contract is, uh, is selected, we can automatically attach some other columns to it. Our, our system is accurate and runs very fast because it has a, a only less than 400 number of million number of parameters with a very low memory footprint. Okay, hey, there's so, like, so, so yes. what, what do you mean? What do you mean by attaching? Like it's in the output, but like oh okay. Attaching like means that uh, yeah, you 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 in, in the JSON file, we you, you can configure whenever this column is selected, we automatically select the other two columns. For 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 any action, for any whenever uh this column is selected from this table. So this is just some action that we can easily configure. And this is this is just to like because because it's gonna be, it's gonna, like it's one thing if it's the output and the but the customer doesn't ask for it then they get it but mm -hmm. you're saying for like if it's like a bunch of like nested CTEs or nested queries that ends uh, up being uh, no no it's, it's not really it's not it has nothing it has nothing with the nested query it's just the uh, uh, for example in, in the in the question it only asks about information about the, it list the contracts so it only lists the contracts. Uh, it doesn't ask about the end date or committer information. So, um, but in order to, uh, while well, in, in some of the enterprise application, so um, we have some default setting, meaning whenever the customer asks about the contract, we only, we, we will always uh, attach uh, the information about the end date, end date information, as well as who are the committers. So those are uh, related to the business rule, it has nothing, to do with a yeah. subquery, yeah. So GM, it. Okay. Is, it, is it fair to characterize this as saying, you know, there's this body of work in which people, this is now eight years ago when people were trying to make yeah. it, this work, they were looking at natural language grammars and then trying to map it to SQL grammars and had mm. all kinds of semantic layer in between. Right, right, right. They would look up ontologies and stuff like that to try right. to find matching. And there are two things they do. They do the Steiner tree stuff for the joint stuff, but for all the other... Right. column selections and stuff like that, they'd use the natural yes. language semantic uh, information. Right. Most of that kind of worked largely for English. You yeah. are doing something similar, except that semantic layer is replaced by this transformer, which mm -hmm. probably allows you to go multilingual pretty easily, right. but right. you still have the grammar to grammar mapping. Is that kind of approximately mm -hmm. what's happening? Approximately is correct, but uh, uh, the grammar wise, so um, we realize that um, so, so first, the most of the traditional uh, work, um, it seems that they, their accuracy is not high. There must be a reason. Okay. Second, uh, even though there's a lot of li related li li literature that is great uh, based on grammar, they try to generate uh, all the token in the abstract uh, syntax tree. I think that's not uh, first. It's not efficient. Second, it's not the right representation. Maybe it's the, not the right representation to generate all the all the token. Therefore, we changed the grammar. We, that's why we introduced a new grammar, which is relatively more high level. As you can see later, it also allows us to do this parsing in parallel. Okay, one key observation is that you see, currently, almost all the work uh, only generate one single to token from one hidden state. So uh, 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 I, I think I'm understanding it. 
then when you train the transformer, do you train it on SQL or not? Do you train it on the grammar that you have internally? Right. Uh, actually, um, we need to carefully design the uh, the training set, which requires a label to label uh, to to um, human work human work to label the data. But during the training, we don't really need the grammar. I see. So you still train on SQL. Got it. So yeah. The however, be... ha mm -hmm. yeah. However, um, I think it's implicit. Why? Because now from our decoder. Got it. Our decoder will only generate uh, uh, segmented information. They will only generate segmented information. They have some implicit meaning uh, that will be automatically matched to the grammar. Okay. So so here is a key difference. Yeah. Oh, anyway, okay. Let, let, let's see. Um, well, um, there, there are a lot of work um, because there are so many for us to list on this single slice. And since time is limited, I mean, probably I would just go directly to the fourth category. Uh, so, it, so in this category, uh, there are many, many related work uh, based on grammar. We learned a lot from them, but I want to emphasize that we have some unique feature that we think are advantageous. For example, we actually, uh, instead of consider a subset of the SQL grammar, we actually consider a superset and rely on the post-processing to further reduce it. And then, uh, more importantly, this grammar allows us to do parallel multitask learning. Okay, here is a, a very crit critical. Usually, one hidden state will only generate one single token. But here, a single hidden state will be passed into a multitask learning module. It will generate multiple tokens in our case. Therefore, our parser essentially is, uh, is doing a parallel, parallel, okay, uh, um, descent parsing. Uh, uh, and we also introduce a way uh, to introduce, uh, to um, make a long range dependency across multiple queries. Let me explain on this slide. This is the high level flow which is a, what I called a parallel recursive descent parser. So the whole process will be divided into multiple runs. Each run consists of three stages. The first stage, okay, is about the pre-processing. It will only select, will select all the columns that have already been selected from the previous subqueries. Okay, so this is our method to introduce long range dependency. Then it goes to the core engine. This kind of core engine relies on the transformer encoder decoder. Encoder is just a pre-trained model, specifically grandpa. All the novelty actually comes from a decoder, uh, which I will uh, explain in the on the next slide. And uh, this decoder will only generate segmented information. It's up to the grandma to organize the information together. And since now this post-processing module can look through the, can check the current, currently used uh, production rule. It can attach associated actions to insert interventions. Um, okay, so let's first take a look at the grammar. But wait a minute. Isn't that the grammar, SQL already has a very well-defined context, context-free grammar. Why introduce a new one? The reason is because this new grammar, okay, um, is a simplified version listed here, is relatively more high level. It's a superset. It gives a superset. Superset. So we, we rely on the post processing to uh, reduce it. Importantly, this grammar actually allows us to do multitask learning during training phase. And in the inference phase, we can uh, run multiple tasks, multiple inference tasks in parallel, which is much faster. So we start from a query, and this query consists of a, a unit operation that is called a query. And a query is just a subquery that doesn't contain nested query. What if it does contain a sub nested subquery? Then we will use a placeholder, okay? The placeholder will trigger another round to generate another subquery, a, a query. Critically, Okay, here is very important. We introduce a production rule that's called a cat, which is a short name for colon action template. This cat will sequentially be used by select, well having group by, order by, but not by from. Why? Because cat only select a colon. 
and from need to use table. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> essentially for SQL bridge, the whole SQL generation process can be viewed as a sequence of cats. Why introduce multitask learning? So cat for cat, this production rule has seven sl slots. They belong to uh, two categories. The first category include including uh, aggregation, uh, distinct keywords, operator, and uh, uh, sorting order. Uh, the key is to observe that there's only fixed number of keywords. Therefore, we use a dedicated classification, very simple classification module out of the transformer layer uh, to handle them. But the column and the value, they have a variable number of items. We use a ranking algorithm, specifically a pointer network to rank them, find the best, best match. The novelty here is that all these multitask learning uh, multitask uh, learning uh, tasks, actually. There are multiple tasks, right? All these tasks are conducted on the same hidden space. So from a, a cat decoder, the cat decoder network, uh, it actually contains four level, uh, it is a four layer transformer followed by this uh, multitask learning module. So the cat decoder will sequentially generate hidden states. It will sequentially generate hidden states. But each of the hidden states will be shared by this multitask learning module. This module will simultaneously generate multiple token. And it's up to the grammar, okay, to organize them together. I hope that this answers your question. So the grammar is implicit. Yeah, I, I think thing. it does. Then the follow-up question to that is, you have to feed this a large amount of training data, right? GPT-4 picks up every SQL it mm. can get hand on. Where do you Let get a vast amount of training data? Mm -hmm. Let me answer the question oh, on the next slides. Okay, I will answer this question. Uh, but a, a, a quick question is that for us, we just need a, for us to fine tune um, just hundreds, hundreds, or, or at the most thousands. Yeah, so for spider, it only have six uh, thousand uh, samples, and that's what we need, actually, um, because we have uh, some pre-trained model, a BERT model, uh, that is supposed to understand more knowledge from other samples. Okay. Um, okay, here's uh, just one simple example that illustrates the process to generate such a predicate in three rounds, and each round there will share the same hidden state. Okay, now I hope that this architecture, uh, uh, this picture can uh, can answer your question. Uh, this is a global picture about the architecture. The encoder is actually just a uh, twenty-four layer grandpa. What's grandpa is just a a, a fine tuned. It, it's a fine tuned version of uh, a bird with a labeled SQL data. Oh. Um, and uh, because it's fine to, so, so uh, even though we did some modification, uh, even though we did some modification, for example, we, we changed the uh, positional embedding and uh, increase uh, some linking embedding, but that's not important, but it, because the encoder essentially, essentially it's just a grandpa. So all the novelty actually comes from the design of the decoder. On the left side, we have this uh, cat decoder, which only select columns. And on the right hand side, we have this from decoder, which select a table. In the middle, we have this conjunction network, which is just a simple a feed forward layer, uh, followed by um, a softmax to select a set operators. Okay, uh, I, I think this example can uh, further illustrate the whole process. This example uh, probably can uh, answer some of the uh, your question, uh, the confusing part. Um, so the so the input definitely includes the original question as well as the database schema. Okay, they are concatenated together and went through the tokenizer. And the the pre-trained encoder will generate a bunch of hidden states as the reference. Then the decoder will consume this reference hidden states. Specifically for cat, it will generate a, a number of uh, uh, hidden states sequentially. For example, the first hidden state, after it is generated, it will fed into our multi multitask learning module. This multitask learning module will automatically generate average life expectancy. This this um, li average is just an ag aggregation. If you still remember, is it comes from the classification module. 
the life expectancy comes from uh, the ranking module. Okay. Then in the next hidden state, we generate a, a EOS, which means uh, end of a second sentence. It indicates that uh, the select clause is completely finished. In the next state, we are going to generate the where. In this case, where actually generated a nested turn token. It means that it will trigger another round, whole round of the whole process to generate to find a subquery. Notice that here, where clause group by having an order, each of the clause contains a EOS and a sentence. It means that all these clauses are empty. Now we have the auto query. We can collect these two columns and concatenate it to the input. Repeat the whole process, we generate the subquery. And then we will use this subquery to replace the placeholder in the auto query. Now we get the uh, complete uh, query. I hope that uh, this flow, uh, this example is uh, uh, self-explanatory. Yeah. This makes sense. So effectively, you have an explicit chain of thought processing style happening uh, inside your 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 network there. Uh, yeah, I, I right. wonder if you if you could get similar results, and maybe that's part of what you might be exploring next. If you ask GPT with a chain of thought mm. related prompt, where mm. it is forced to have to think about each of the clauses one at a time, does it do better? Mm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Actually, um, this is also the, the earliest point that I made. I think, um, especially for if you have many, many detailed instructions, um, at least right now, I don't think uh, GPT-4 or GPT-4 Turbo can completely follow all your instructions. Maybe GPT-5 can completely solve it. I don't know. But uh, so far, uh, if you uh, make this uh, prompts to be even more complicated, maybe it will work, but uh, it may miss some of the necessary information. Uh, this is one point that I make. But uh, using a grammar, you never miss these rules, right? Because it's part of your grammar. It's part of your procedure. It's never missed. Okay. Uh, essentially, we are conducting top-down BFS um, breadth-first search traversal for, for this algorithm. Okay, I think the time is limited. Let me um, jump directly to the uh, so the experiments. Uh, we conduct experiments on public test set from Spider. Note that this table doesn't contain uh, the results on private test data set for hard and extra hard questions, uh, which means that they, they contain join and nested queries. You see, uh, SQL Bridge has a clear improvement. Uh, in addition to public set, we also asked our uh, collaborators uh, to test on their private data set. And uh, here are the uh, results. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, up to now, question, before, uh, yeah, the yes. private data sets, mm -hmm. uh, were the literals in the private data set in English or was that some of the language? Did that matter? Oh, yes. Um, actually, it's in uh, Chinese. Our collaborator, they test the, in their, uh, uh, is Chinese. Yeah. Um, GPT-2, GPT-4 seems to be doing well on, on, on Chinese, but probably not as good as uh, English. Uh, however, here, the reason you, you may ask, you may wonder why you only test the GPT-3.5, uh, uh, actually 3.5 turbo. Uh, <clears throat> The reason is because we did test, I, I, well, not me, uh, our collaborator, they did test uh, GPT-4, but uh, somehow it never uh, finished. So they only reported this result to us. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now let's talk about, uh, jump to the second topic, <clears throat> DevOps root cause analysis. Uh, how many minutes do Maybe we have? Maybe before we jump to that, just on that first part, sure. I know we're running short of time. Yeah. Have you tried BirdBench or are you planning to evaluate this on BirdBench? Oh, uh, say it again. Word, word bench. Uh, yeah, that's a new benchmark, right? Oh, is, oh, uh, I see. Uh, word bench um, and be more comprehensive. I see, and I see. You could even I, take that line because I know we are playing around with that at Data Chat. So happy to exchange notes uh, if you're interested. 
Oh, great, great. I, I think, I, I, frankly, I think um, so far in SQL Bridge, probably maybe one of the reasons uh, why ChatGPT, uh, um, maybe it's not that their main focus. I think one challenge is that we don't have a very a big uh, training set. So far, the training set is doing very well. And uh, uh, for example, Spider is very helpful. I'll give a lot of uh, guidance. But uh, if we have an even bigger one, um, that covers uh, different, uh, say, aspects of the grammar and uh, and across different domains. Probably that will uh, even better because uh, we do have uh, mm, uh, we do observe a phenomenon phenomenon that uh, one year ago we tested uh, uh, on Spider, we trained on Spider and uh, some other uh, public available data sets. Found that um, it has some distributional shifts uh, to the private data sets. So if we have more data sets, that will be very helpful indeed. Okay. The reason why I picked the second topic is because it uses a so-called causal analysis and where uh, interventions actually widely used for causal analysis. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the cloud database, database usually uses a so-called uh, microservice architecture. <clears throat> uh, for microservice, for microservice architecture, in order to do this root cause analysis, is triggered by an end-to-end -end KPI indicator. Uh, so, whenever, for example, here is just a delay. So, under the hood, we have some kind of uh, uh, an anomaly detection algorithm that trigger the um, root cause analysis. So the goal, uh, usually for root cause analysis, it requires some domain knowledge to design a causal graph. Okay, it requires domain knowledge to design a causal graph. So the goal is to quantify the influence of all the factors on this causal graph and find what's the most likely factor that lead to this abnormous KPI. For example, in this case, we have uh, uh, this red box Pardon me, this is uh, uh, for the for the uh, Chinese character because this is actually copied from a real um, system that are running internally. Okay. Um, <clears throat> why, why do we care about root cause analysis? So once upon a time, there was a real failure um, on our cloud uh, platform system. Almost all of a sudden, a lot of the operations stop responding. And the system generates thousands of normal traces per minute. And each trace actually contains thousands, hundreds of cores, let alone we have thousands of machines. And each machine can have a, a number of metrics, including CPU memory and a number of uh, waiting threads. So it's important to automate um, the diagnosis. OK, so what's the cause graph for a microservice system? Uh, in order to answer that, first we need to define, uh, you, me introduce an, uh, a working definition for context propagation, which is just to weave together the measurements, including metrics and logs, from individual nodes, and collect distributed traces by attaching a unique ID to the request when this request traverses the microservice system. I think uh, this, this is one real example. I think this is uh, a very intuitive and a self-explanatory. Uh, but the critical part is that to observe that this uh, solid line represents a synchronous core and the, the dashed line represents an asynchronous core. <clears throat> For example, D1 calls database followed by operation P1 for post-processing. The, the delay actually is equal to the summation of these two periods. However, for E1, E1 is the parent span of D1 and D2. They run in parallel. The delay actually is determined by the critical path, which is defined to be the one with the maximum delay. So this is what we call the max plus calculus. It turns out that microservice system is uh, very easy. I, we can di directly derive the causal graph based on the RPC quality relationship. However, it's not complete. Here we list the six types of uh, issues we observed on our uh, cloud, data cloud database. In addition to 
delay, we also have a, a, uti a resource utilization and some additional events, for example, software upgrades. So it requires domain knowledge or expert to add some additional factor into the causal graph because different causal graph can lead to different root causes. Suppose we decided to add a CPU utilization into this causal graph. <clears throat> we need a function to characterize the re relationship with other with a delay, for example. Uh, one approach is to domain is to use domain specific model, for example, QE model. Here, a polykinchin formula is one from a QE theory. Okay, here's the framework of our uh, Sharpley IQ. It consists of forward paths and the backward paths. The forward paths evaluate all kinds of kind of factors. What's a kind of factor? A kind of factor is just a what if question. What if you change a subset of factor from normal to abnormal? What can you observe? So that's the kind of factor. Then in the backward paths, we collect all these evaluations and make a summary to compute a inf an influence score for each of the factor. Here we are using a Sharpley value with a new splitting invariance axiom. Okay, so for the forward pass, we need to define a value function, okay? A value function for each subset of the factors. The tail is back in the dog. So the value function actually is the change of the KPI. When all the factors in this set change from normal to abnormal, and all the other factors remain normal. Okay, here is one example. Suppose P1, okay, changes from two seconds to three seconds. It increases by one second. Using the max plus calculus, we can compute its impact on the energy and the delay. Okay, it's actually also equal to one second. So that's why the value function v p1 is equal to one. <clears throat> Similarly, we can derive the value function for p1, d1, d2, and uh, d1, d2, okay? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, we, the next we go to the back backward pass. Uh, in this step, we need to collect all this evaluation from the forward pass, uh, collect all the evaluation and to make a summary. Um, suppose we are computing the influence of P1. We need to enumerate all the permutation for the factors. Here we have four, four factors. Then in total, we have 24 number of uh, enumerations. Now suppose for one of the, for each of the permutations, suppose we are P1, we are sitting uh, in a line, right? Uh, all the guys sitting in front of me, let's name it to be set S. The marginal change is defined to be the difference before and after adding me into this set. For the first line, P1 is the first guy, right? Nobody sitting in front of him. So the marginal change is equal to V P1 minus V non. V, v, P, P, uh, v P1, if you still remember, is equal to one from the previous slide. V non is um, naturally defined to be zero. That's why the marginal change for the first line is equal to one. Repeat the whole process for the each for each of the line, and then take average. We compute the influence for P1. Now we can repeat the whole process for each of the factor. Here I want to emphasize that this is only a conceptual illustration. Why? Because this conceptual illustration has an exponential computation complexity. Uh, we actually have a far more efficient algorithm <clears throat> by exploring sparsity. Okay. Uh, this complexity is O n log m. But let's use this, uh, stay with this conceptual um, illustration for easy uh, for easy, e easy understanding. It turns out that the, the procedure that I described in the last slides exactly gives the Sharpley value, which is unique under the following three famous actions proposed by Sharpley. However, it's not enough. Why? Because the traditional Sharpley value only characterizes the discrete factors. But here we have a span. 
each span represents a continuous time period. A time period can be further divided into sub, sub intervals. So we introduce a property that, that is called a splitting invariance. In addition, we also needed to take a causal relationship into consideration. In this line of research, actually SHAP is the first one that introduced SHAP value used for explainable ML, but it doesn't consider causal relationship. A follow-up work is called asymmetric SHAP value. Even though it considers causal effects, but it's not invariant on the splitting. Here is one example that illustrates splitting invariance. Suppose operation C cause D in a for loop. On the right-hand side, you see the influence keeps decreasing when you increase the number of for loops, okay? But intuitively, intuitively if the total length of the whole uh, span remains constant, then we shouldn't. Then it should give the, uh, the same influence. As we, the asymmetric uh, Sharpley value is not consist consistent with our intuition. Okay, here's the example, um, well, it's accurate and it, it runs very fast. A neural in orders of magnitude faster than neural network based approach. Okay, now let me um, finish my talk with the concluding remarks. <clears throat> Uh, AI for DB actually uh, indeed is uh, is a very big topic. Um, our team primarily focuses on in DB ML, uh, including uh, NLT SQL and loadable function for in DB inference, as well as AI ops, including scheduling, anomaly detection, root cause analysis, and uh, knobs tuning. I'm sure <clears throat> all these details from today's talk will be forgotten. But I hope the spirit can, can still go through. One of the key messages that <clears throat> is possible, even though it's not a must, is possible to insert low level controls precisely into the right place at the right moment to make general AI to be far more efficient and sometimes even more effective. Small models can be mighty. I personally believe that the, this design philosophy has a lot of practical value, uh, especially uh, for low resource setting with a uh, distribution of shifts. Okay, so uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. All right, I, I will applaud on behalf of everyone else. Uh, Jimmy, it looks like you have questions. Do you want to go for it right away? Uh, uh, yeah, why not? Uh, uh, does Aditya have his hand up? No, others I'll just go for it. Uh, I, I think this is super interesting. Are you uh, focused on a certain class of SQL complexity? Are the questions that people are asking usually uh, SQL queries that don't have deep levels of nesting, single block queries? Or have you tried how this works when the resultant query is deeply nested? And especially, you know, might the natural form might be a correlated subquery? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um... So uh, we actually, uh, yeah, so first we do generate a uh, sub, sub query, but it's not deeply uh, nested. Usually it depends on the, um, I think it de depends a lot on your uh, training data. If the training data usually is uh, maybe uh, two or three or four levels high, uh, deep, it, it's very seldom for for the trained neural network, uh, even uh, equipped, even, even augmented by the grammar, to generate a, a deeper one. Um, but you, you do mention one thing that I think is very uh, good observation. For example, I think here we have one example that shows that after uh, the correction using mean search, we actually can maybe uh, attach some very well um, tested rules for rewriting SQL to make it from a nested SQL to a join SQL, right? So these are equivalent to, there are many rules that has been proven to be correct. So this can be automatically um, be incorporated into our system to make it not only correct, but also easy to read and uh, runs much more efficient. Great, and one last question and then hand over the baton to someone else. What part of SQL does the grammar not cover? Or is your grammar a superset of SQL? Yeah, uh, very good question. So um, 
So this actually involves, uh, I think, uh, more work. Uh, so far, as I mentioned, our grammar is a superset. So far, we uh, our main focus is to satisfy our uh, customers, our enterprise customer, which is our collaborators. For example, we are supporting Holo. Holo, frankly, is a subset of grammar. It doesn't support uh, many of the keywords. So that's the uh, priority we are going to support. But our, because as, as I mentioned, it's a superset, uh, it gives a, a lot of flexibility to insert new rules. It can be gradually uh, make it to be uh, fully fledged. That's also one of the uh, key um, port that I want to make. For example, here, um, this is from a, a Turbo for uh, GP, GP, GP2, uh, GPT4 Turbo. Uh, for the question that I uh, uh, I showed earlier, uh, what's my uh, uh, attendance rate in the past two weeks, right? Even though this um, example is wrong, okay, the generated one uh, answer is, is, is not correct. There's an even more severe problem with this uh, generation is that, uh, okay, it, it's actually also the power. It shows the power of a GPT-4 turbo. It uses a lot of inf knowledge it obtained or learned from others from a lot of other samples, but it doesn't know that our whole system doesn't support many of these functions, like lag, right? It does, our whole system doesn't support it. So um, even though we do provide it a, a few short learning example in the prompts, but somehow GPT-4 um, didn't only learn from the few short, but also learn from its own previous experience, okay? So this is something that we don't want the GPT-4 or at least a solution to overthink. Great, I have one more question if no one has anything else. Go for it. I know we struggle with nested case statements. Yeah. We don't generate SQL directly in data chat, but when we use it for stuff in which that's needed, oh, right. yeah. it is challenging. Do you yeah. hit that case? It is super hard yeah. Yeah. to make yeah. it learn. Yeah. Uh, and there are examples, but it's not that. It's just a right. because it's a mix of declarative and procedural that gets in the way, and it's super hard to make that work right. I don't know if you guys hit that problem or if you do yeah. something to make it work. Yes. Actually, you are guiding our uh, direction of the development. Indeed. <laughs> We uh, exactly you are talking about exactly the point that we are. Uh, I mean, um, uh, a, a key problem that uh, our collaborator are asking us, to, urging us to to solve. Uh, so far, the solution we provided only provide a single shot. Okay, is based on a single uh, question. There's some easy fix. You you can concatenate uh, by using a dedicated or separate algorithm, right? I can just combine multiple questions together and then make it to be a single sentence. By doing so, we can still use utilize our tool. Well, this is one simple solution. But a, a better solution is um, basically what, what the question you're talking about is that we have some maybe some long range dependency across multiple questions, right? So how do you incorporate all this information together so that you can provided the best um, guess of the, of the uh, of uh, guessing what you are asking for to generate the, the SQL for the for the last for the latest question uh, so far we are uh, we have a demo it's not a, a official product but it's a demo internally uh, used by our enterprise customer I mean collaborator it's based on a large language models yeah. And we depend on, in other words, the the, the you know short short answer is that we depend on different algorithm to make a summary. Got for it. Us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. I guess my last question would be like, what's the what's the you know I think you said your accuracy was like roughly eighty percent for the, the test you, you've you've done. Like, what's the remaining twenty percent? Is it SQL mm -hmm. features or is it just like? weird phrasings in the natural language that it can't map to SQL itself? Like what's the, like what's the next big thing for you guys to, to mm. figure out? Yeah. Um, 
so it it uh, this is a very 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 good question. It uh, requires some scru scrutiny on what exactly mis what exactly the mistakes that we made. Um, interestingly, we actually found some mistakes in uh, spider uh, training data set. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Even though it still can run, but uh, logically it's, uh, it's, it's actually the same mistake that I mentioned earlier. It actually pairs uh, uh, a column prefi prefixed with a, a, a aggregation function and a column. Uh, some of the query, some of the engine do run and return a randomly selected column row. Um, so that's one of the, but uh, um, for, some of the mistakes that we are still trying to see how to um, improve it using two methods. Either we provide a more similar uh, sample to make the, to enhance um, the part that we are weak, or we can escalate some of the concepts which are widely used, but are very difficult to generate to be part of our classifier. Uh, I think the to this escalating concepts into a simple and robust classification module is a very powerful method for us.